Welcome to NCIX Tech Tips. Now, running a YouTube channel requires quite a lot of storage, especially when we strive to bring you the highest quality possible videos, except for the echoey audio, but we're working on that too. As the channel's grown, so have our storage needs. So today we'll be showing off the NCIX Media Team's new shiny ultimate NAS, featuring the very sexy Western Digital Red 3.0 6 terabyte drives. The WD Red family just got bigger. Now compatible with 16 bay solutions and available in up to 6 terabyte capacities. Click to learn more. Now, as a very wise man once said, never half-ass two things, whole-ass one thing. As a foundation, we started off with this Norco 16-bay hot swap rack mount server case. We're only using 10 drives in total right now, but this gives us easy expansion in the future. The case has two five and a quarter inch bays, six high-performance 80 millimeter fans, support for ATX, CEB, and EEB server motherboards, and almost any type of power supply on the market. Inside two of the hot swap bays are two ADATA SP920 120 gig SSDs in RAID 1 for the operating system. Inside another eight hot swap bays are the new Western Digital Red Nasware 3.0 drive. Now, WD's Nasware 3.0 is a new firmware introduced with this generation of Red drives designed to provide support for RAID, high compatibility with NAS systems, 24 7 reliability, and enhanced protection against data loss in the event of power failure. Now, you may have noticed that I did say six terabyte in the intro. Yes. WD Reds have stepped up their game and now they are offered in five and six terabyte capacities adding to the one, two, three, and four that were already available. Also, the new NASware firmware officially supports up to eight base systems, whereas the old one was only four or five or something along those lines. Now, of course, they still offer stable track, disc platter mounting, 3D active balance for dynamic load balancing, a three-year warranty, including 24 seven tech support, by the way, and that telepower drive speed that keeps the drives hovering around you know whatever-ish RPM. They don't really they don't really advertise an exact RPM for red drives because they're making sure that they're balancing heat output, power consumption, and performance at all times. But what if you want more? Well, WD is introducing the WD Red Pro lineup. These are designed for higher performance situations, and while the capacities are two, three, and four terabytes, so slightly lower capacities available, you're now getting official support for 16 bay NAS systems, full 7200 RPM performance, hardware vibration compensation, and a five year warranty. So the testing performed on these drives is actually quite a bit more rigorous, even compared to the regular WD Reds, which are a 24 seven validated drive. For our needs, however, we only needed the regular RAD drives, and we were more than happy to receive these six terabytes from WD. Big thumbs up to them for making this possible. Now give me my check. No, just kidding. Anyway, back to the system here. Everything is hooked up to an Intel Core i5-4670 processor, an MSI Z87 G45 gaming motherboard, 32 gigs of AMD Performance DDR3-1866 memory, a Be Quiet 750 watt power supply, and an Intel four port gigabit ethernet adapter. It may seem like an odd hodgepodge of components. In fact, it does wheels. I'm not quite sure what you guys are doing here. But keep in mind that these are parts that we've extensively tested to be stable and we're only powering a file server, not doing rendering or like, you know, intense calculations or whatever else the case may be, which is why I'm sort of questioning why you need a 4670 and 32 gigs of RAM, but whatever. At the heart of the, at the, heart of the system though, really, is the drive controller. So that's an LSI Mega RAID 9361-8i RAID controller card. If you're interested in this card, we've actually got two videos here and here that go into it in more depth. Software-wise, wise, we're running Windows Server 2012 R2 and LSI's Mega RAID Storage Manager. The great thing about this card is it allows real-time configuration changes to your server, both in the OS as well as in the BIOS. Although, honestly, the BIOS tool is a little bit more difficult to use and the Windows tool is much, much better. So after many different combinations, finally, Wheels settled, I mean, this thing has been in progress for ages. Finally, wheels settled on the perfect balance of performance, reliability, maintenance, and expansion. And uh, even after all this time, he still had to message me on Hangouts about it. So he eventually settled on a RAID 6 with one drive as a dedicated hot spare. That gives them 28 terabytes of storage, two drives worth of fault tolerance, literally two drives can just die, 
and minimizes downtime while ordering replacements because the volumes can rebuild on the fly as soon as one of the drives fails because there's that hot spare. The virtual drive is currently configured with an adaptive read-ahead policy with a write-back write policy. Read-ahead simply means the controller will automatically look at the next sector of data before it has finished reading the current sector, allowing for even faster sequential performance. And write-back means that the data is marked as completed as soon as it's finished writing to our cache and not to the disk, which improves the performance of our data redundancy generation. With the UPS, we don't need to worry as much about data loss due to power failure. So, with internal file transfers, we saw a peak read speed of over 750 megabytes per second, which will be more than enough to fully saturate our gigabit network card with four simultaneous users. Not too worried about smaller sector sizes, as we'll be primarily using this for video footage and reading from it for, uh, to all the various workstations around here. We don't have any measurements from the workstations yet, as we were so excited to show off the new NAS that it's not actually fully set up. And, uh, they're still trying to find a place for this monster, and CIX Anthony happens to sit right beside the switches, so I guess he better get used to the fan noise. Um, just a heads up, wheels, I've got my Norco configured with um, fan speed reducers for the 80 millimeter fans, and as long as you don't turn them down too much, you can make them somewhat tolerable, and you can still get decent cooling. So click here for part two, when we show the complete setup, and see if we can saturate the quad gigabit NIC, which obviously as soon as this releases won't necessarily be available, so stay tuned for that. Thank you for watching, guys. Comment below if you has and have a NAS and how you have your drive set up so maybe Wheels can get some more guidance because, you know, he needs some help with that. And as always, don't forget to subscribe to NCIX Tech Tips for more videos just like this one.